and girls for over the hump day. Yes, this is Wednesday and you're enjoying Butch on Sports. At least I hope you will here. Butch on Sports is here. I'm Simply Butch. And as always, thanks for tuning in. Yes, indeed. Thanks for tuning in on a Wednesday. Right about 9.30 we're doing this pod just for you, boys and girls. Give you some sports news that you can't get enough of. Hey, let's have at it here. Let's have at it. Right now, right now, as I look at my monitor, I'm checking out the Detroit Tigers doing a commercial. So we'll just flip the script here and take it another notch to uh, the World Series. And we're seeing another commercial. So I'll just give you what I have at this point present moment here. After six innings right now, University of Michigan is trailing Vanderbilt by a score of 6-1. to one. This is the rubber game that the winner will take all the marbles for the college I used to call it the College World Series. You don't want to call it that way. The College Championship, D1 and of course some pluses there. University of Michigan right now don't look too good here. We'll keep you abreast of that particular there. Detroit Tigers are playing, or were playing right now, the um, Texas Rangers. And they were losing by a score of 4-1. to And I'm close to the end of that particular game. Indeed, I will tell you it was a final in a moment, uh, I, which I am checking on right about now here. And I'm um, Looking at still commercials here. So once I get the final score of that particular one, which is not far from, we'll give it to you. We'll give it to you indeed. Detroit Pistons tomorrow are going to be welcoming their new forward, Tony Snell. He's going to be available to the media tomorrow here. Hopefully we'll get some positive words on the acquirement of Tony Snell. Uh, Detroit Pistons owner Tom Gores and Livonia base uh, I school stack brothers and company. They announced yesterday, if you did not hear, the formation of a joint venture to redevelop the palace of Auburn Hills and the surrounding land. As School Stack Brothers there will serve as the lead partner and manager for the future mixed use of the development, which expectedly includes some corporate offices, uh, research and development, some technology companies, and a whole lot more. In other words, it's going to be an industrial, <laughs> industrial place. It's a palace. It's going to get a new face or get completely torn down and redevelop here. A lot of, many people going to, you know, I have fond memories of the Palace of Albert Hills lasted about 30 years in a couple in a couple of months. Sorry to say, you know, brand new building went up in 1988. Should I say 1986, excuse me. Went up in the air for uh, the Piston while they were playing at the uh, Silver Dome, which is no longer in our existence as well. As that was torn down and uh, being redeveloped as well. So the people of Pontiac and Auburn Hills, two uh, different cities, 
are going to have some new tenants and some new things to look at in those particular areas. You know, sorry to say, and as we speak, Joe Lewis is being ripped apart to the scene, and that's being redeveloped. So, a couple of places where we enjoy uh, some good stuff is going, going down. Yes, going down to the ground. Kind of remind you here that ESPN and the NBA TV is going to bring the fans all 83 games from the MGM Resort for the NBA Summer Basketball League is going to be taking place pretty soon, like next Friday, July the 5th. Big game, 9.30. The Knicks against the um, Pelicans, where you'll see the two top rookies uh, shine for that particular uh, ordeal there. You can guess who they are. Yes. Take a guess who they are. Meanwhile, the Tigers are done playing. They lose to Texas by a score of 4-1. to one. That's the final score there. Boyd, the loser. Minor, the winner for Texas there. Um, afternoon game tomorrow. As well as this Friday. Uh, they'll be going through some... Uh, Celebration. Of course, the celebration started Tuesday with the 1984 edition of the Detroit Tigers being commemorated all week long at the stadium. Yours truly will be there Friday and Saturday, maybe Sunday, and uh, deal with the extravaganza of some of those players coming back home to uh, celebrate. The Detroit Tigers uh, win of the World Series there, and I'm kind of anxious to say here and now, going to do my due diligence and uh, have some fun there and enjoying the festivities as well. Detroit Red Wings, uh, they released their schedule, or should I say the National Hockey League released the schedule for all the teams, including the Detroit Red Wings yesterday here. Um, the team's 94th overall um, year in the National Hockey League. The Red Wings will open the campaign on the road on Saturday, October the 5th, against the Nashville Predators before coming back home and hosting the Dallas Stars in their home opener on October the 6th. That will be at 7 o'clock. I first announced it at 5 o'clock. And that might be bounced back to 5 o'clock, but right now they got it listed at 7 p.m., uh, which makes a little bit more sense because, again, that's football season and everybody wants to get in there two cents of some good football. Hopefully for the Detroit Lions to be some good football being played this year. Little Caesars Arena will host 22 weekend home games, five on Friday, seven on Saturday, and ten on Sunday. That's including the regular season finale on Saturday, April the 4th, versus the Tampa Bay Lightning. This uh, season, 82-game slate includes four games against the Atlantic Division, uh, that's where uh, Detroit uh, will reside. 28 games, that's four games each for those particular rivals that they have in their division. Three games against uh, the 18 Eastern Conference Metropolitan Division, that's like 24 games. And two games against all the 15 Western Conference foes, that's 30 games there. Um, hmm. The 2019-20 campaign will begin with a balanced home and road split with five dates on the road among the first eight games overall. That's including a Western Conference trip in Canada between October the 15th, which uh, starts at Vancouver, 17th at Calgary, and the 18th in Edmonton. The month wraps up with a four games, home games, I say, in five games stretch from October the 22nd through the 29th. That highlight visit will be one of the uh, one of the uh, particular teams coming into play will be the St. Louis Blues. They'll be uh, playing on Sunday, October the 27th. 
So, hey, that's a good thing. And all this week, if you don't know, the Red Wings uh, have a, their roster development camp, which uh, is held at the Bedford Training Center just below inside uh, Little Caesars Arena. Uh, it started yesterday, Tuesday the 25th. It's going to run to Saturday the 29th. The camp's roster currently will include and be consisted of 24 forwards, 15 defensemen, 8 goaltenders, 10 of the 11 players the Red Wings selected in the 2019 draft uh, on the June the 27th and the 22nd in Vancouver, British Columbia. That's when that was held. Of course, the attendance for the development camp of forwards, uh, that it will be open to the public, of course. If you don't know, in the, the metropolitan Detroit area, you can go down there and see some of these fine players in action. In addition, the uh, Red Wings have 17 free agent prospects from the major junior, colle- uh, junior leagues uh, around the country and in Canada, along with some collegiate um, uh, hopefuls from college and also from the European ranks as well for workouts featuring the on-ice skills and development and off-the-ice workouts each day. They'll have a three-on-three tournament on Friday the 28th and the red and white game on Saturday the 29th. I know you just can't wait. You can't wait? I can't wait either here. Red Wings is getting it together here for the 2019-20 season there. We need to talk a little football here a wee bit there. One of my uh, chief concerns, Tyree Hill, he was one fantastic player for the Kansas City Chiefs uh, last season here. However, during the offseason, Tyree Hill got in a little wee bit of trouble there. And I say wee bit is an understatement. Uh, NFL investigators come close Wednesday afternoon. They had a closed-door meeting with the particular, uh, which is Mr. Hill, and uh, which took place in Kansas City. It started about 8.30 a.m. and ended about 4.30 p.m. Uh, sources said to Yahoo Sports, which uh, is probably standing outside just waiting for a scratch of information to be given to him, which was probably zero. The Wednesday meeting gave Hill and his legal team an opportunity to provide some further clarity regarding the four-page rebuttal of his counsel sent to the NFL in May against child abuse charges. Uh, Johnson, the Johnson County District Attorney, has stated publicly weeks ago that the criminal child abuse charges involving Hill, who is still suspended from all team activities, it would uh, include the Kansas City Chiefs, is no longer active there. Okay, so basically they have dropped those particular charges. However, the NFL which has uh, their rules regarding potential discipline, has proven in the past cases that the player doesn't need to be a criminal charges to be brought against them in order to invoke some disciplinary action against the particular player. Depending on the NFL, when it makes their ruling, Hill will be available to suit up for training camp, which starts in late July. So that's hopeful for Mr. Hill. He'll be able to practice with the Kansas City Chiefs. Unfortunately, the NFL is going to make a ruling, and he'll probably be suspended for a wee bit of time for his off-season shenanigans there. The University of Connecticut will be moving back to the Big East, becoming official. That was today. The University Board of Trustees approved the school leaving the AAC, or the Atlantic uh, Coast Conference there, for the Big East, and that was on, like, Today, per Hartford Conrad, uh, University of Connecticut's official uh, personal spokesman, he announced the move on, th- uh, will officially do it on Thursday. From current there, he said, why we appreciate the AAC, interim board chairman Thomas Ritter said that the board had made a decision in the best athletic department interest for their particular team and also the university. At this time, I support and accept the Big East invitation as a better overall fit 
in my opinion, it is best suited for the student athletics there, as, or the student athletes as well. Make no mistake, we still are committed to a football program, Ritter uh, announced, and that we have opportunities for the football and decided on a pathway for a successful and exciting football program. Multiple outlets, including Yahoo Sports, reported over the weekend that University of Connecticut was leaving the, um, the uh, American for the Big East Conference and um, they, they will, um, will be going back. I said the AAC or the AAC, which is the American Conference, not the Atlantic Coast Conference there. Okay, let me um, correct that mistake here. I'm sorry. Detroit is hosting the PGA all this week. And they have exciting things like the Area Code 313 uh, tournament yesterday on Tuesday. Today, Wednesday, they had the celebrities pit up against other golfers, professionals that is, with some golf playing that uh, they can't get enough up on the first front nine and whatnot. Having a good time. Detroit's excited. A big crowd was down uh, at uh, the Detroit Country Club today. And by the way, let me announce that the parking that was scheduled to be at Palmer Park Golf Range, okay, that has been scratched. You're now going to have to park your cars at the old Michigan State Fairgrounds on Woodward near John R. and State and um, and State Street there. So that's downtown, not downtown Detroit, but the fairgrounds. So, you know, go on their website or call. We don't have the number. They didn't give it to us. We tried to reach out and get that particular number so we get further information. But that information they did give us, yes, uh, that the ground was too soft at the, the Palmer Park uh, Golf Club and that it was necessary to move the parking arrangement. If you're driving your car to the state fairgrounds, which has a lot of concrete and rocks and stuff there, where parking will be better and you won't be stuck in the mud. So, uh, again, uh, give that particular call if you're not sure of where to park at, which they do have a website set up for this particular Rocket Mortgage Classic for this week there. Go on that site there and find out where you can park within the limits, which you'll probably have to be shuttled to the golf course, of course, but we don't want you to get mixed up or get information that you can park here and you can't there, okay? Some of the top sports names, including Dustin Johnson, the number two player in the, in the world, and uh, 1916 U.S. Open champion Ricky Fowler, number 14 player worldwide, and the 2019 U.S. Open champion Gary Woodland are all in town to take part in this. And no, no Tiger Woods. And I don't know, he said he wants to spend more time with the family. I can't argue with that, but again... It's kind of sore there, you know, because Tiger Woods don't play any back-to-backs anymore, and, you know, we can make a lot of comments on that there, but I won't there. He says he wants to spend more time with family, and he has that right to do so. The tournament, again, was going to be taking place during the mile. The 27th is going to wrap up on Sunday the 30th. Rocket Mortgage and the Detroit Golf Club are hosting a number of events, again, outside the tournament itself. Uh... Again, go on their website there uh, and find out more information about those goodies. Oh, yes. The World Cup coming up. It's the quarterfinals here. And that starts tomorrow as well, the 27th, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Norway and England on Friday, the 28th at 3 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. France is going to take on the U.S., or the U.S. is going to take on France on their home grounds there. That is, uh, that's going to be exciting, of course. And on Saturday, you got two that's going to be taking place in Italy against the Netherlands, and that's going to be at 9 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, and on Saturday, later on at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, Germany will take on Sweden. So you got the headlines for that for the next 
three days. Uh, more World Cup action before the finals and semifinals and, of course, the finals erupt. I think the finals is on July the 7th. Can't wait. That'll be on Sunday. Well, double-decker buses and all kind of other good stuff that's going to be awaiting the Yankees and the Boston Red Sox. They're going to be taking in some time in, in London, England this weekend. Yes, in London, England, where the center field and I got a sight of it this afternoon going on the website to look at the soccer stadium where they're going to be holding the event. The center field is 385 feet. And we're talking about two heavy-hitting home-run teams. They're going to be playing Saturday and Sunday in London, England. I do believe the Saturday game is around about 1230. Um, yes, I think it's 12.30 and the Sunday game is going to be a while, lot more earlier. I think it's about, about 9 o'clock. Uh, check your local listings, of course, because that could be very much so backwards. But again, they'll be playing those two particular games in London, England, the Yankees and the Red Sox. Of course, I mentioned the Detroit Tigers is going to be taking on the Washington Nationals during this week of commemorating the 84 championship team of the Detroit Tigers. All the fun and sights and sounds and giveaways and uh, Sparky Anderson and bobbleheads is going to be given away. And I think some bats or something there, the miniature bats or something is going to be given away one other day as well. On Friday, the bobbleheads, I do believe, on Saturday. I hope I get any of them here. Any of them is a nice little addition to me here. Uh, but uh, if you do go down there, hopefully they'll get a great crowd down there to commemorate that there. As the Tigers are now 23 games under 500, not good indeed, not good at all. Again, I will repeat, I will repeat that they lost to, yes, they lost to the, who did they lose to? The Texas Rangers. Hey, can't say no more about that there. During the College World Series right now there, Vanderbilt is leading the University of Michigan in the eighth inning right now. That score is Vanderbilt 7, University of Michigan 2. One more inning to go, and uh, you can call the college baseball season over. University of Michigan, if they don't make it, gave one heck of a run. They should be very proud of for a team that no one expected to be there. No one at all. And made it a worthwhile expedition for those kids there. They'll remember it greatly there. Hopefully, you know, they don't look at the loss as a, a failure, but they look at the accomplishment that all those kids made. And, uh, again, they talk about how fun it was and how loose they were. Ah, you know. When you lose, I, I don't know how anybody can take that. But again, a great accomplishment by the University of Michigan. I, I'll say it best there, and uh, they should be congratulated. They should be congratulated indeed. Yes, they will. Well, I'm going to call it tonight, boys and girls here, uh, of uh, this particular edition of Butch on Sports. Uh, again, a lot to be had with the, by the way, the golf tournament is uh, sold out on Saturday and Sunday. So if you really want to get some action in, you might want to take in Thursday and Friday. Tickets are still remaining for that particular day. And I'm quite sure tickets are still remaining for Detroit Tigers 84 uh, World Championship celebration with those players coming into town, Daryl Evans, uh, Kirk Gibson, Jack Morris, a host of thousand, Lou Whitaker, Alan Tramble. You'll surely try to get a conversation with some of them, those particulars then try to have some fun. Uh, Put You On Sports again is, of course, a presentation of Oh My Darling Productions. We will be on Saturday and Sunday, or Saturday or Sunday. Take your pick there, because we'll normally do this on late Saturday night. We'll always spill it into Sunday morning. 
But we will be on the air and uh, kind of prep everything for uh, Sunday and the next week of sports news and give you what action that's come about throughout the rest of the weekend, uh, this weekend here. Uh, you can check Butch on Sports on Facebook. Go to Butch on Sports site on Facebook. Give it a like if you can. You know, and if you need to get invited, I'll invite you in. Sure. Come on in. I'll say yes. You can also check it on out of going to the site of Podomatic.com. Type in S-I-M-P-L-Y-B-U-T-C-H-T-O-O dot Podomatic.com. You can also catch this series and the fun on the game show, sports show, which I appear on Monday with Scott Nason, E.J. Russell, Dave McKay, as we uh, give our sports bill for two hours of fun and frolic and arguments and a whole lot of other good stuff there. Uh, check us out on Monday. That starts at 6 o'clock. Okay? 6 o'clock. Everybody, y'all, 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 y'all be good. Have a great, great, great uh, beginning of the week. It's going to be hot in Detroit, boys and girls. 90 degrees tomorrow, Thursday. Everybody been complaining about the weather, but you can't complain no more. And hopefully it doesn't rain or shower or whatever. Hey, have yourself a ball. Behave yourself. And, uh, hey, goodbye, everybody.